the next thing we're going to be talking about is the war for public schools. Um, this was a three part investigation done by salon.com and it is being fought by a small college called Hillsdale. It's a very small school, but they are leading the way for the religious right to invade public school and basically privatize um, public education. Fantastic. <laughs> no, it's not. It's bad. <laughs> So if you thought Betsy DeVos and her shitty school policies were a thing of the past, let me tell you, mofos, <laughs> it is so not. <laughs> so basically the idea is this small Christian school is funding, uh, um, going into states, um, getting with these Christian organizations on the state level, and basically working with right-wing nationalists, um, religious right religious right people to basically pull away public funding of that we pay as taxpayers into the school system and funnel that money into privatized education. And they're going to teach wonderful things. Let me tell you that racism is dead. <laughs> In case you didn't know. <laughs> I didn't know it was, but apparently it is. Well, um, lab oh, so, we should go now. <laughs> I know, I don't know. <laughs> um, and that, so let me quote the article. article um, Systematic racism was effectively vanquished in the 1960s, that America was founded on Judeo-Christian values and principles, and that progressivism is fundamentally anti-American. In the late Jan in late January, the governor of Tennessee announced plans to partner with his Hisdale to launch as many as fifty such schools in that state. Something public education advocates fear could be tipping point in the fight to save public education. So this would set a precedent for the rest of the country to follow, for them to lose that funding, and this type of curriculum would be put into these schools. And what's so scary about it that we're already kind of seeing it. You see with the book burning, you see it with like the don't say gay bill, like in Florida, um, that they want to literally whitewash um, American history. And like, you know, like, like slavery was like, like what we did to like the Native Americans and what we did to, you know, and this with slavery and everything that they were just bumps in the road, you know, like they weren't the atrocities that were committed in this country in the past. So it's, it's really bad because this is some that like major thing, major um, programs like PragerU is putting money into this. Um, there are Repu Republican pol um, politicians, pundits, lobbyists that are, that are putting money and time and advocating for this. Um, and it's deeply, deeply concerning. So um, why don't you guys give me your thoughts? Because I have a lot of feelings. <laughs> about this. Most, most of them bad. <laughs> and, and we affirm your feelings here, yeah. Helen, yeah. because we share them. Taya, I'm going to go ahead and give the floor to you so you can go ahead and weigh in. Guys, um, I have to be sincere. I'm scared for you. Uh, for you, I mean the USA. I do consider education one of the most powerful weapons that we have that is not violent. Uh, my channel is an educational channel because I believe that education is the only way to uh, get to people to change society without a violent outcome, without wars, without doing things violently. Education, for me, is the best pacific way to reach to those, uh, uh, to those places that we cannot reach in other ways to show the people a better world. Um, I think that a lot of bad things, <clears throat> evil things happen due to lack of education. Uh, I, I could talk a lot about that because I'm obsessed with the harms of religion and I always link them how, how religion stops education. And I see that these guys are using education, this powerful weapon to indoctrinate people. Just to be clear, you have a private college that is literally starting a war against public schools in order to indoctrinate students in a false right-wing extremist point of view. And guys, please check the articles. We have like four parts that which shows how the college is driving rights nationwide, fighting uh, schools, um, how... And I have to say it, it had to be Trump. It had to be freaking Trump, the one uh, doing all of this. Check the, the three parts or four parts. It's, it's interesting. And I say that I'm afraid uh, or I'm scared for you guys because you already have 
book bans. Uh, I've heard about burning books over there. I know that if a teacher dares to talk about racism, they can be fired. I, I read about a law. I don't know if it passed or not, but it was like if a teacher dares to talk facts that contradict uh, the Bible, they can get fired as well. Uh, there are several laws that are going to punish teachers and librarians if they dare to talk uh, to students about certain books. Uh, I remember about this uh, new awful law that I have no idea what is happening with it in Texas, where if you're a teacher and you don't send a transsexual child to the, the police in order for him to be taken out of their family, you can get punished and you can go to jail. So your country, guys, is literally punishing teachers, the, a guide for for people, and is forcing them to indoctrinate people, uh, yeah, by children, I don't mean only children or so on, people in general, in these dangerous ideas that go against common sense, uh, against against anything that is good. I mean, this is pure indoctrination. It's evil, and I see the USA turning into a dictatorship, into a religious dictatorship, and that is scary as a fact. Well, I think that it when you when you take our education system and use it in order to teach Judeo Christian values in this way, it's it's basically the foundation of trying to turn our government and how we actually were founded into something completely different. You know, I, I hear this argument a lot that the United States were founded on Judeo-Christian values, or and and that is absolutely not true. <laughs> you know, I, the the one of some of the reasons why you had uh, folk leaving Europe, specifically like in England during like the 15 and 1600s is because they wanted to practice their religions freely of the crown. There, there was no separation of church and state in England uh, before the United States was founded. The crown was the church and the church was the crown. And I should know that because I was raised in that particular denomination. So I know that for true, true, not just for true, but for true, true. Now, this and, and so this type of thing has been happening for with wow, I know like, you know, I know that you mentioned uh Betty, uh Betsy DeVos and you know and her her um her her uh what do you call it? her crusade for mm -hmm. privatized education and um but she she is not She's not like the originator of this idea. This this push for privatized organ um, school vouchers, you know, shifting money to private edu uh, private educations, especially like Christian schools, yeah. um, and turning the and and also this push for charter schools is it has been going on for some time now, and and it's just like to the point where, you know, the right specifically and and I'm and 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 the reason why I say the right is because the the main talking heads of this of these particular sensibilities are from you know mostly christian conservatives and things of that nature that is really pushing these particular policies uh you know Hensdale college when i read this art when i read like the three parts of the article are responsible for the content of the 17 76 patri patriotic commission mm -hmm. that that was that was them i mean mm -hmm. even though like um trump did the executive order in order for them to to set this precedent which was but which was damn dead set against the 1619 project by the way they em employed hensdale christian college in order for them to help create the content in the curriculum around the 1776 patriotic curriculum bullshit. And, and the thing about it is, is that this is like some of the same stuff that you would, that you have seen um, in the past from uh, specifically from the United Daughters of the Confederacy when they uh, formed, I want to say in the early 1890s and they 
went on a tirade in another crusade to rewrite the narrative of the Civil War and slavery. Like their whole thing was to say, oh, slavery wasn't that bad. Black people in slave were happy. And everybody on the plantation was happy. And we went to church and we sang songs and, and, you know, we did a dance, we made a little love and we got down tonight. That's what slavery was, you know? And they were very successful in putting in this particular rhetoric in books, in public schools that taxpayers paid for to have in their schools. So this is nothing new. This, this is nothing new. The Bible talks about there's no, no, no new thing under the sun. You know, y'all, y'all know I like, I like to quote the Bible when it's appropriate, but you know, but this is, but this is basically just what we're seeing. And, and I have my, I have like my thoughts on why this is the case, like especially specifically why we're getting such a big attack on public education. And, you know, I, I attribute to more and more people that are actually falling away from the church and falling away from religion. I mean, I think that like one of the, you know, one of the further articles that we are going to touch on actually talked about how the nons are close to 30% in the United States. Mm Mm-hmm close to, you know, and, and, and these are people who are basically, they're, they're not necessarily saying that they don't believe in God. They're just not a part of any type of religious, they're not religiously affiliated. So, and, and I've always said that when you start to gain more knowledge about the environment around you, you are less likely to actually engage in fantastical thinking. And that is what education does. It helps our children and adults because we should never stop actually engaging in any type of educational activity in order for us to become norm knowledgeable and also for us to employ skills like critical thinking so that we are more curious and more um, committed to the truth. And truth to me is what can be verified. And that's what I have to say about that. Any other thoughts? Round robin, round robin. I I think <laughs> that I think that we've kind of gotten comfortable again because I think this is a fascist ideology to go into the public education system, privatize it, and completely change curriculum, and basically telling children if you are not a Christian nationalist, where patriotism is associated with religious belief. And if you go against that, you are not American. That is a fascist state. And I think that people aren't paying attention because they think it's not going to happen here. Hey, representative, former representative Shea said you should be killed. I know. I said, well, <laughs> okay, <he> did. <laughs> sure. <laughs> whatever but like but this is the thing that I, that is deeply deeply concerning about this because they're starting with the children and there's mm-hmm. a lot of people a lot of parents there's a lot of adults that think that their christianity is connected to their patriotism and if we are not paying attention and we are not trying to fight against this if you do not want your children to be learning this type of bullshit you better be going to your school council meetings. You better be going to your city council meetings. You better be paying attention to who is on your school board. Yep. That's right. And where that money is going if you don't want this to happen because it is happening. Yeah. We- just be like those parents that we we talked about um, a couple of weeks ago when their um, when their kids were subjected to a Christian assembly during school hours. And they got together with the with the FFRF. Shout out to the Freedom from Religion Foundation, by the way. Right. And and uh, and and sued them, sued the school district. I believe that was in West Virginia, uh, saying that no, you're you you will not use public funds in order for you to uh, for you to indoctrinate our children into Christian ideology. And um, that's all I have to say about that. And Tail, before we move on, I'm going to give you the last word. Please, sir. Oh, thank you so much, Cynthia. Very kind of you. And um, 
guys, I will repeat it. I'm afraid for what I see at the USA. And the more that we talk about these issues, the more that I see what is happening in your country, the more I feel that I'm not actually obsessed with the harms of religion. I just see them. And I feel forced to talk about how awful these ideas are becoming and how quickly they are advancing. Can you imagine? Uh, I've seen a country that seemed to be the number world uh, country in the world turning into a third world country uh, the more that i look at, at, at their news and what is happening over there it's scary it's freaking scary from my point of view so i really really hope that people start taking action that they start uh, fighting against these awful ideas and people uh ukraine is going through a war Please try to stop people from kidnapping children and bringing them to a country that is trying to... Uh, what is the word? Because I don't want to talk about washing minds. I Indoctrination. indoctrination. That is trying to indoctrinate people. Yep, so please, it. please, people, start taking action um, and look around you. Think this is happening. History is repeating itself and it's scary as fuck. Especially from someone whose dream was to live in the US one day and now I couldn't live there even if I got paid by it. Sorry, guys, Damn. I will miss you, but I'm not leaving there. Damn, I, what a scathing rebuke, <laughs> as it should be. My goodness. Yeah, I, never, I never thought I could be, be way better in a third world country. <laughs> and it's scary. Sorry, guys. I, I mean, yeah. I, I can I, I, I'm sitting up here, you sitting up here, uh, tail like, can I get my cot ready to go to Latin America? I'm just saying, um, I'm learning Spanish every day. Uh, prepare for a baby as well. <sighs> but okay, <laughs> guys, okay, that was heavy. That was heavy. So I think it's time for us to take a break from our conversation.